That's right! In recent years, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure has, dare I say it, reached the mainstream audience. With its recent successful anime adaptation, promotion of two newest games being All-Star Battle and Eyes of Heaven, and even its appearance in J-Star's Victory Versus all played a part in the series reaching the licensing of its manga. But I bet some of you are wondering, what's the hype or what's good about Jojo's Bizarre Adventure? On a first impression, most people have thought something along the lines of, isn't it just about some gay looking characters or why are the guys so big or what is weird? The purpose of this video is to introduce the series in a new light, so I highly recommend you to share this video with everyone, whether it's an anime fan, a gamer, or even someone who's somewhat into anime, because they're missing out on something. So, stay tuned as you'll learn the appeal of the series and its various influences on the world, for chances are, you've seen a Jojo reference and didn't even know it. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure was originally a manga, or a Japanese comic, written and drawn by Hirohiko Araki, who never seems to age. While Araki has worked on other manga series such as Bao and Gorgeous Irene to name a few, it wasn't until 1987 where his career began with his most successful work being Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, where he expresses his inspiration of horror films, western music, fashion, and renaissance art. A basic setup of Jojo's story is about a family tree with the series spanning multiple sequels, but before I speak of the story's content, I want to elaborate a bit on the artist's artwork. The following image is an example of his work which was made during the 1990s. I chose this piece just to illustrate the amount of detail placed in this two-page spread and to give an overall idea of his utilization of colors which Jojo is known for. Most of his influence in coloring came from the French artist Paul Gauguin which was known for being experimental with certain color choices, but also had a fascination for symbolism. To be more specific, Paul Gauguin was intrigued by mystical symbolism with Africa and Asia serving as a basis for most of his works during the 1880s. The comparison I can make between Araki's work with Gaguin is the color choices for the backgrounds and floor, but I speculate that Gaguin's own fascination with other countries may be why Araki tends to have his characters wear certain ornaments on their attire to provide a bit of mystique quality. Araki also likes to travel so this statement can hold some merit. Some of my favorite works that display this mystic allure is A Battle Tendency Volume 8 on the left side and The Stardust Crusaders Volume 17 on the right. I'm always in awe of these covers as certain objects and characters blend so well with each other that they even camouflage themselves. For instance, how many of you noticed the extra arms on Joseph Joestar? Araki also has a habit of including Renaissance art in his work, such as his character, Giorno Giovanna, which is modeled after Michelangelo's David. Other examples would be in Part 6, where the birth of Venus painting actually came to life, or better yet, in Part 7, using Leonardo da Vinci's golden rectangle theory as an assassination technique, where their powers can only be used in the presence of objects following said theory of a perfect rectangle. However, Araki would also reference more modern art, such as Jeff Koons' Balloon Dog. Okay, so now that we have an idea on Araki's style, let's talk a bit about the story. As mentioned before, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure follows a family tree, which is the Joestar family. Much of the series can be considered a shonen horror, or a broader explanation, a fighting series filled with horror elements that is meant for a male audience. The story of Jojo is one that displays the Joestar's fighting against multiple foes ranging from vampires, zombies, serial killers, Italian mafiosos, and corrupted figureheads such as a priest and a president. However, a unique trait of Jojo is that it's divided into parts and constantly changes its main cast and setting. For example, Part 1 Fans of Blood takes place during the late 1800s where the Joestars reside in England, starring Jonathan Joestar. Part 2 Battle Tendency takes place in 1938 starring Jonathan's grandson, Joseph Joestar. Then its sequel would star his Japanese grandson, Jotaro Kujo, and so on and so on. As a family tradition, each main character will have the nickname Jojo. For example, take the J.O. from Jonathan and add the J.O. from Joestar and you get Jojo. Although, as the family got more culturally diverse, it became a challenge to keep up the Jojo nickname, such as Jotaro Kujo, which you take the J.O. from Kujo, or Giorno Giovanna, which Jojo sounds like Jojo. As a final explanation of their names, the nickname Jojo did not originate from this Jojo, but it's a reference from the Beatles song Get Back, where the lyrics say, Jojo was a man who Jojo 
like any good story, you cannot skip parts as they all play a role into shaping multiple events and constantly raises the stakes with each generation. In short, it's best to see its natural progression from one family to the next, much like Dragon Ball proceeds into DBZ or Kini Command into Ultimate Muscle. As of right now of this upload, the anime is adapting the story in chronological order, implying that the series cannot be skimmed. So, what is so good about JoJo? To begin, most people don't realize that this series is old. Even though its anime started in 2012, the comic is from 1987 and is still being published today at part 8. However, a weakness and strength of the JoJo series is that each part has its own tone and appeal, which leads to our examples in Part 1, Phantom Blood. Araki's themes at the beginning of JoJo would usually center on immortality, beauty, perfection, youth, strength, and family. Part 1, Phantom Blood, utilizes these themes and sets the origin of the Joestar family. The conflict begins with the wealthy Joestars adopt Dio Brando into their home, whose goal is to rob the family of its riches. This eventually turns into a family feud among stepbrothers, and the series goes bizarre once an artifact known as the Stone Mask is used by Dio Brando, who discovers its secret. The Stone Mask can turn its wearer into a vampire. Thus, Theo abandons his humanity to rid himself of his brother Jonathan and changing the series into a horror tale where Jonathan trains in the martial art known as the Ripple to slay his vampiric king. To put it bluntly, Jojo is over the top, filled with lots of yelling and shouting very epic quotes such as <laughs> Or one of my personal favorites, even Speedwagon is afraid! While the series does have a recurring theme of horror and very violent content, silly things are to be expected. Hey baby! But that's part of the fun, as every character has their own little quirk and quotes which become very apparent in later parts of the series. Oh shit! Son of a bitch! While on the topic of being over the top, the series is often described as a comic book coming to life, as Jojo utilizes sound effect text during most scenes. <laughs> This, along with its use of changing colors during dramatic moments, earned its visual appeal to the point where various other anime since 2012 have been mimicking JoJo's style, such as Nobunaga, and led to a boom of seasonal anime to be more ambitious with their color. As the 2014 series No Game No Life being the most noticeable contender and filled with a couple of JoJo references. Before I move on to its sequel, Battle Tendency, there is another key concept that makes up the beginning of JoJo. And I'm not talking about the poses, I'll mention that a little later. But I want to share is that JoJo is manly. Despite all the flamboyancy which dominates its future parts, JoJo at its root was a very masculine series and is more noticeable here than any other part. Remember, the Phantom Blood comics were originally made in the 1980s, and the traditions then were a lot different from the standards of 2015. For example, the Shonen series of the 1980s seemed to be aimed at both boys and men. There is a common misconception that a lot of anime characters are kids with spiky hair or feature a very slim physique. Trust me, that is not the case. While it's true that certain authors draw characters in that style, there's more than one genre of anime. This specific genre serves as the foundation of Phantom Blood, which also summarizes why characters are so huge, why Jonathan is such a good guy, why there's an emphasis on chivalry, heroism, rivalry, and love. There is a genre out there that needs to be officially made, which is the manly genre. In short, most of the shonen series of the 1980s comprise of manly men due to the boom of American action films and muscular actors such as Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Most of the main characters back then were, well, grown-ass men in contrast to the characters of today which usually range around 17 years of age and lower. Comics or manga of the 80s were usually filled with mature content, whether it was something superficial such as nudity, violent, or eternally dealt with men being in relationships having to bear sorrow of seeing their friends and lovers die, who are often killed in very brutal ways such as being impaled, crushed, or straight up murdered. And surprisingly, all of this content was meant for kids, 
and succeeded both financially and leaving a mark in history. While America has their iconic costume superhero, these manly men would be Japan's equivalent to that. Basically, these men were mostly tragic heroes who endured suffering in both mental and physical struggles. Which leads to another of JoJo's inspirations being the 1983 series, Fist of the North Star. THE MANLIEST ANIME EVER! The story takes place in a post-apocalyptic world where bandits and villainous martial artists roam around the lands, killing people for their own ambitious conquest. Kenshiro is the savior of this world who is the very symbol of heroic manliness. His destiny is to free this world from tyranny with his martial art of Hokuto Shinken, aka the Fist of the North Star, which kills people by making them explode. The North Star was based on the Mad Max films, along with Kenshiro being a combination of Bruce Lee and Sylvester Stallone, especially from the movie Cobra. However, Kenshiro's characteristics are completely original, creating memes such as manly tears and quotes such as While Fist of the North Star isn't too popular in the anime community, you can see his influence throughout many masculine characters and even modern shonen like the series Toriko and especially Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. There's multiple influences found within Jojo, but let's begin with the most basic being the character designs. Before Araki made Jojo, most of his characters were of average build, but then along came Fist of the North Star, which led his art style to change into a masculine look. Much of Jojo's early designs were heavily based on Kenshiro. On our right, we have Jonathan Joestar, the Jojo of Part 1. And on our left, we have Kenshiro, and there's a family resemblance. And if this didn't convince you, then these images from 2006 and 2007 where the characters have almost no distinction. Moving on to Dio Brando, who at one point wore a cape with feathers on the collar, and to our left we have Shin, who wore the same thing. Proceeding into part 2 with our Jojo, Joseph Joestar, who doesn't heavily resemble Kenshiro, except when he's angry, that's when there's some similarity. And finally, to end our comparisons, is part 3 with Jotaro. At first glance, you see similar features, but when you take the cap off, voila. What I'm trying to say is that a lot of JoJo's appeal originated from Fist of the North Star. So to end this video, I'd like to mention that Phantom Blood is a tragic tale of stepbrothers, similar to the story of Fist of the North Star, which often dealt with Kenshiro facing his brothers. Much of the conflict between Dio and Jonathan is based on the battle of good and evil between Kenshiro and Shin, to the point where some scenes bear similar events such as Shin taking Kenshiro's fiancé hostage or Dio hurting Jonathan's girlfriend. Both of their respective stories end in tragedies as well as sharing this one iconic scene where both of our heroes enter the villain's castle and shouts the quote, I return from the depths of hell. This concludes part 1 where our characters carry sorrow upon their shoulders believing that a true man accepts love and fights evil to protect his family. Phantom Blood consists of episodes 1 through 9 of the 2012 Joseph Bizarre Adventure anime, and its manga will be released this February 2015. So I hope you enjoyed this video and look forward to part 2 where I talk about the iconic Jojo poses, a hit of flamboyancy, and is shipped into a more comedic series.